Steam Locomotives in Miniature at the Steam Workshop. This series is about rebuilding a 3 inch scale Garrett traction engine, and this is part 1. The general series title is Steam Locomotives in Miniature at the Steam Workshop. This of course is a steam locomotive, but it's a road locomotive. And in this clip I've just remounted one of the main bearing assemblies to the side frame. The official name for this traction engine is a Garrett Twin Crank Compound Tractor. So a good place to start is with the Twin Crank Compound Tractor crankshaft. The crankshaft of any steam engine is possibly the most important part. The cylinders are also important, but they can blow, but it will still run. If the crankshaft is not right, often the engine won't run properly, and if it does run, it won't sound good. I'm very pleased to say this is a beautifully made crankshaft, in fact most of the engine looks pretty good to me as well. And my job at this stage is to make sure that this crankshaft runs in the main bearings with no slop and no tightness. If you don't get the crankshaft right, the engine will never run properly. Before fitting the bearing top caps back in place, I'm just getting rid of any paint that's still stuck to them. They're quite well made, not exactly beautiful, but functional. When the steel parts of this component are repainted, it's going to look good. But first of all, I have to fit it in place using a soft rubber hammer. This seats the bearing on the crankshaft, and as you can see, there's a little bit of play. It's not much, but it's a little bit too much. So I've taken the top cap off, and I'm going to grind off some of the bottom part of this bearing brass. I'm not going to show that because it will confuse people. I've been doing this for a long, long time, so I can sort of estimate the gap and I know how much metal to take off the bearing. And I need this bearing top cap to fit in place without having to use shims. So after a quick squirt with the oil can, it's time to fit the bearing top cap in place again and see what it's like. Once again, I'm tapping the top cap into position with a soft rubber hammer. And now when I feel at the crankshaft, no play at all. So that's this side done. And I'm also using washers because this part is adjustable and by tightening up the nut onto the paintwork it would remove the paintwork. So it's better to use washers. But generally on steam engines you find that you only use washers on parts that are adjustable. If you look at the rest of the bolts they're straight onto the parent metal. When Dave at the steam workshop starts the painting process the ring of bolts that hold the main bearing in place on the side plates will be painted over when Dave starts painting the engine. And as I turn the engine round to do the other side, you can see there's still some green paint stuck to that one. This remaining green paint will be removed in the fullness of time. In this first episode, this is not the final fitting of the crankshaft. I'm just fitting it to make sure the bearings are OK, adjusting where necessary, and replacing any parts that are not serviceable. This is a bit strange though, I found this brass shim just on one side of the top cap which holds the bearing in place. And this made the crankshaft a rattle fit in the bearing, so I don't know what's going on here. When I removed this shim, the crankshaft was a perfect fit in the bearing like the other side. The other thing that I noticed was that this stud is a bit of a mess, it's a bit chewed up. So temporarily I fitted a bolt to hold the top cap in place. This is not going to be a permanent fixture, and very shortly I'll show the fitting of a new stud. I put some oil in the oil reservoir simply to keep the string in place. It's full of string which acts like a wick and the string had dried out. Time to see if everything works and rotates correctly. I temporarily fitted the pins into the crossheads and I can't describe how well this crankshaft feels. It feels like this engine was made by a proper engineer. It really does feel technically perfect. When I rotated the crankshaft and the pistons went back and forth, water came out of the blast pipe. That's because this engine has just had a hydraulic test on the boiler, and some of the water must have got past the slide valve into the cylinders. In this clip, I'm just giving the moving parts of the crankshaft a good oiling. I'm not going to be running the engine for quite a while, but it's a good idea to keep some oil in there. In this clip, I'm just rotating the crankshaft to show how free it is, and it's very free, even connected to the crossheads. This traction engine has some suspension, which is unusual for a traction engine. As I move this part around, you can see how it works. It slides up and down in horn blocks, but the horn blocks are not currently connected to the side plates. The first thing that I'm going to do is remove these brass oil reservoirs, and these will be cleaned up and polished. But for the moment, they're really grimy, so I'm going to put them in this pot of cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinner, to remove the oil and grime. I'm going to speed up this job because, believe me, it took quite a while. 
These are four BA nuts and bolts, and the rear ones went into place very easily, but the ones around the front were very fiddly and took quite a long time to fit. From the bottom of the engine to the top, I did notice that the regulator was firmly stuck, but luckily my small barcode spanner fitted in just behind the link, which allowed me to pull it forward. I'll be looking at the slide valve in more detail shortly. But now it's back to the bottom of the engine to fit the springs. This is a pair of fully working leaf springs, really substantial leaf springs, but then again, when the engine is on its feet, or should I say on its wheels, it's very heavy. And there's a very useful adjusting ring on the bottom to adjust the height of the suspension. From the bottom of the engine to the top, I'm removing all the nuts from the steam chest cover. Some of them come out complete with the studs, but that's not a big problem. And as usual, I use a very sharp knife to break the seal between the cover and the steam chest. Someone in the past has used a screwdriver on the corner, which is a bit of a shame really because it makes a mark. This is the best way to do it. I didn't dismantle this engine and the person who did dismantle it just put all the parts in a box and didn't take sufficient video to show where everything goes. These small resealable plastic bags are very useful things to have in the workshop because you can put parts in them and then write on the front what the parts are. The rest of the parts for this engine are sat in three or four small plastic boxes, and the larger parts are on the shelf. They've already been primed and are ready for the top coat of paint. This is a ram's bottom type safety valve unit, and I'm just cleaning it up using a wire brush in the electric drill. The time has come to sort out this stud. I really can't use a stud like this on this engine. It's really chewed up. So John made me a new one. It seemed like a good idea because he was working on the lathe at the time. All I had to do was polish up the end of it and fit it into the hole in the main casting as I'm doing at the moment. And just in case you haven't seen any of my previous videos, this is how I fit studs to model steam engines. It's quite simple really. I just use a couple of lock nuts, tighten them onto the stud itself and then simply screw the stud into the hole. In this case, I use some retainer. It's not a Loctite product, it's an equivalent. I use this retainer to make sure that the stud stays in the hole and doesn't come loose when you undo the nut at a future time. So part one is a success, the crankshaft fits beautifully. But now I have to remove the crankshaft because the main part of the engine still needs painting. So rather than show you the disassembly process, which is an exact opposite of the assembly process, I'm going to show you something completely different. Following a hydraulic boiler test on my beautiful 5 inch gauge Stirling single engine, I'm just giving this a quick run on the bench to clear all the water out of the cylinders. The Stirling singles are my personal favourite when it comes to model steam locomotives. A lot of people think, well, that's not going to pull anything with one wheel, but that's incorrect. I once built a Midland spinner, which is the same wheel arrangement as this engine, and that pulled really well once I balanced it perfectly. With these single wheelers, the balance is critical between the front bogey and the rear set of wheels. Later this year, I'll be doing some work on this engine, and balancing the suspension will be part of that series. I'm going to leave you with it just running on the rolling road. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Thank you.